Good afternoon. We welcome you once again in the symposium on food safety. Now may I request Dr. Sneha Ambani, ma'am, head of the department, Department of Pharmacology, Ames, Jodhpur, and Dr. Kamla Krishna Swami, ma'am, former director, NIN, to please chair the session. Good afternoon. Uh, I see the hall is almost, uh, should I say, one third full. Oh, two-thirds empty is something which uh, you will have to decide because I think having invited people uh, they are waiting to apprise you of the current situations and I hope all of you would be awake and interested in the proceedings of the meeting. Uh, the current uh, uh, session three is to do with the food legislations and its enforcement. And it is extremely important a topic because whenever you talk about a food and nutrition security, food safety is also one of the prime concerns. And if you do not have food safety, you can never have a food security. We are always bothered about the quantity of food to be given, of course with various macronutrient and micronutrient compositions. We, ha we hardly ever give a thought to how safe is the food before it gets into the gastrointestinal tract. And therefore, to the, the World Health Day, to, the slogan this year is uh, food safety from farm to plate. That means it is a long road before it travels to your plate. The food goes on to a long road and therefore there are several hurdles which one has to come across. So food safety issues are important and we do have a, a food safety regulatory authority in India, FSSAI and uh, they are of course, uh, it's a newly formed organization, it's about two or three years old now, or perhaps four years old. Earlier we used to have the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act but now it is totally a food safety issues and it becomes important in the context of two things. One, the food grown in India is increasing, so it has to be safe. Second, there are lots of processed foods coming into the market. And if you need to have a good processed food, a healthy processed food, food safety is prime concern. And the HECCP approaches are extremely important, whether it's a vegetarian, or whether it's a non-vegetarian food, or whether it's a uh, beverage, everywhere the safety issues are of concern. It can be a physical hazard, it can be a chemical hazard or it's a biological hazard. And in India, biological hazard seems to be plenty and quite often we hear of uh, several food toxicity diseases uh, breaking out. There are two sectors in this, one an organized sector and another unorganized sector. The problems associated with unorganized sectors are enormous because there is no one to guide them, there is no one to survey them and that's why, I, for example, the street foods. And in India today, no metro city is free from street foods. So these are some of the important issues and for this food laws are laid down. But what perhaps is more important I would say is the regulations is not as important as its implementation and enforcement. So let's hear some of the speakers. We have two speakers in this uh, simple session. First speaker is uh, Dr. Amitav Banerjee. Uh, he is uh, uh, actually an MD from AFMC Pune and uh, postdoctoral training in clinical epidemiology. He had um, uh, worked at Inclen, KGMC, Lucknow, etc. He worked as a public health specialist and epidemiologist in the armed forces since 1988. Of course, armed forces have a uh, lot of processed foods and was exposed to a variety of uh, clinical and public health problems. Later as an epidemiologist with the mobile epidemiological team of the armed forces, Central Epidemiological Surveillance and Center at Armed Forces Medical College. He has gained a lot of experience and I'm sure today he's going to tell you 
how best to survey these problems, identify the culprits or identify the problems and set right this before it becomes uh, an, it, uh, the disease breaks out or the, an epidemic proportions. He has published more than 100 papers in national and international journals and undertaken uh, several uh, funded research projects. He is editor-in-chief medical journal, Dr. D.Y. Patel University, Pune. And one of his published papers on population and samples is viewed as reading material in one of the research methods courses being conducted at Stanford University. Currently, he is working as professor in the Department of Community Medicine, Dr. D.Y. Patel Medical College, Pune. I invite Dr. Uh, Banerjee to give his presentation. I'm sorry I forgot to mention my co-chair is Dr. Sneha Ambwani. She is a pharmacologist and uh, I'm sure just like the food field, the drug field has many more problems and she can easily uh, transport what's there in the drug to the food and food down to that drug. Good afternoon everyone. Uh, I thank every one of you. In fact, I wanted to thank the organizers. But I thank you because so many have come for the post lunch session. As chairperson has said, it's one third full. One third is too many. Actually, I once had an experience long back. I was a young person that time. And uh, I had a post lunch session, a little lower down. When I went to the podium, I saw only one front of it. So I said, I am to Puna Bolenge. I have prepared. I put my heart into it. And After I finished, he clapped and when I, when I started going, he said, you sit down, I am the speaker after you. <laughs> <laughs> so that way I think I have progressed. I have so many of you. I hope all of you are not speaking after me. Anyway, thank you. That is the first confession I have to make and I have to make another confession. I was invited by the organizing chairperson to speak on current food laws and I am not a current person, you, as you see I am a person who has his best years behind him. So I said why you have chosen me, there are so many experts. He told me that you are the only person I know who can speak without knowing anything. <laughs> so I don't know whether it's a compliment, anyway, but what I can contribute I thought because everybody, I saw a lot of experienced speakers before me and everybody was contributing from some experience, first hand experience. I have got first hand experience which is 10 years old, particularly as Madam said from the armed forces, we have got lot of uh, troops staying together, lot of troops staying in barracks, thousands of troops in the regimental centers and one of the problems of this food borne illnesses are it is very difficult to pinpoint because people eat at one place and then they disperse. And you know what is the definition of food poisoning? That large number of people, common signs and symptoms. And how will common signs and symptoms be detected? Everybody gets dispersed. There is a dilution effect. So nothing, hardly any food poisoning gets notified. Only when people are coming together, they eat something and they sleep in the same barracks they get ill and it comes to notice. And armed forces, you will get only old data. My data is more than 10 years old because new data is under security classification. So I am as new as you can get from the armed forces. <laughs> so whatever investigations I may say, explain, that is old data but it applies. There is a universal problem which are still there. So my, actually my topic was current laws regulation, I thought I will make it more interactive, like what are the challenges actually, what are the challenges and whether whatever laws we have got, whether they are, they can cope with the challenges. And the new law is very new, FSSA 2006 has got implemented in 2011 and it is still to take shape. So it is too early to know how effective it is. But PFA Act is there since 1954 and most of the core issues are same as far as food inspection is concerned, samples are concerned, 
except for minor changes. And another experience we have in the armed forces are we have got the cantonments, military cantonments. And I being from the public health side, during my service I have been health officer in number of cantonments. There we have the, we had the food inspectors earlier. Under the PFA Act, we being health officer, we used to be the health authority. Now they call, I think, designated authority. That time it was known as health authority. Under us the food inspectors used to work. So some experience we have got. And another myth which I will try to break, I hope they don't stop my pension from the army. Another myth is that people have a very high opinion that army is everything streamlined. Everything is under control. And some of those myths I can, when I give my presentation, you see it is perhaps that since we can investigate, we find things are not good. So what our concern is that if in an organized, like the armed forces, if there are so many problems, if there are so many problems, and some of the problems are really big problems. I mean, whether these laws are well and good, but whether these laws can really cope up with all the hazards we will face in the already existing hazards. And so rapidly we will go through whatever most of it, you are aware of it, earlier speakers have already communicated. So challenges we know broadly, we have to see the context because any act does not in isolation. So you have to see the context. Like most of the FSS that 2006, I was going through it. Most of it are very good on paper. Most of it are on the state of art like the codex elementaries because we have to conform to that because we are indulging trade, food trade and all that. If we do not comply with that, but these problems are definitely important to have quality food, that, that is but one part of the story. What is, is, what is the big ecosystem of a country? Excremental diseases are endemic in our countries. Excremental disease means waterborne disease like typhoid. You see, you must have studied about typhoid Mary. One typhoid may infect so many. So it may start with a foodborne disease, it may convert into a waterborne disease, and again from waterborne disease, again foodborne disease. So we cannot separate in compartment. If we are food authority, we will see only food. Water is some other department, public works department. So oh, mera kaam nahi hai. Aisa hone se, we will not be eliminating the problem from the roots. You see, the waterborne, foodborne, they seamlessly merge with each other. After that, person to person contact. As you know, outbreaks may start with waterborne common source outbreak, then due to poor hygiene, poor hand washing facilities, person to person, and it propagates like that. That's why we are not able to control most of the communicable diseases. So our problem is the excremental diseases, unsafe water supply and sanitation, Higher, which causes higher reservoir of infection. You have seen the reservoir chain of infection. Poor infrastructure for food surveillance. This is not only because of the poor infrastructure, because large population. We have got a very high population density firstly. Then lot of migration. People are moving and those people who move, they eat more outside food or more unsafe food. And then that perpetuates. So it's very difficult to keep food surveillance, who is eating and who is getting sick. He or she himself may not aware that it is due to the food, maybe attributed to something. So food surveillance data we do not have. In developed countries they have got the pulse net and the food net, here we do not have those. And that is one of the basic baseline requirements that in the armed forces we have got, but we do not communicate to anyone because we think it's a secret. So we, if we can contribute, if they can be, I was seeing in the FSA, I, 206, they are representative. So I will just vis a vis, I will say what are the things in the FSSA which can be. So we can have somebody from the armed forces or some of the railways, big organizations where they have a organized system of health services where this can serve as sentinel surveillance. So many outbreaks are occurring. After all, if cantonment mein koi outbreak hota hai, hawa se to nahi hoga. That means the surrounding population may hoga wo, endemic hoga. Abhi jaise H1N1 hota sab halla karta hai ki kisko kaan se aya. 
but so food born out well we have got so accustomed to it that we take it in the stride so if any outbreak is there we should inform and we should have a common team fssa ka jo food authority hai at the central level chair person it can have a representative from the armed forces or from the railways also it has got from say agriculture it has got from commerce so whatever it is the food surveillance is not adequate and the food on this is under reported and under recognized under recognized and even in the organization like the armed forces or any other if you first ye is a try to cover up they feel panicky that it is a causing something adverse will come so these are the things which we lack the data so other issues are that we did not have a good scientific backup so in the new fssa 206 there are going to be a number of eight scientific communities uh, committees eight scientific committees which will uh, undertake all scientific evidence every science based science based it will be driven by science earlier it was more of a inspector raj food inspector and only that is also required but that should not be the main now the new fssa the philosophy is that science based like dr kapil was saying even whatever program we implement it should be science based similarly fssa act has to be whatever implementation has to be evidence based or science based so anyway this is one of the example of the endosulfan in kerala still we are not sure whether it is science or it was sensation or it is later political so it again requires proper investigation which was perhaps lacking or it got out of control so we are still not aware whether this is again the storage problems already some of the speakers have said like from farm to plate the poor storage can attract the rodents and as you know rodents have got the salmonella and the loss of perish perish food loss of production rotting wheat grain trying to salvage so these are 50% or 25 to 50% of a food grain are lost due to poor storage so these are again issues which have to be under fssa 2006 these issues also will be subsequently tackled as i said it's a very new act so still it has come to it has to evolve so this food waste has prompted the supreme court to issue a order that this should be distributed to the people this waste has again it became a controversial issue now this is a, another problem which you see you must be seeing in all cities i have not had time to visit jodhpur but this is the city which i am coming from a good city in pune so this is like pune is having lot of problems now because they used to take the garbage from pune and dump it in some village uruli and the villagers said ki now we will not allow you to dump because this village nobody is marrying in this village ki yahan pe dump pura pune ka kachra dump hota hai so now there is a agitation by the villagers so the kachra in pune this is a market place shivaji market so you can imagine that market place garbage and the rodents dogs stray dogs and food hygiene to baad mein aata hai hai na food hygiene hum chota chota sample le rahe hai ab itna bada samne problem hai this i am reminded of one anecdote one person office ka boss tha whenever there used to be a crisis in the office he used to take out his purse purse mein photo dekhta tha aur fir he used to tackle the problem very efficiently to uska jo dusra piche se dekha usne bola ye kya hai bola ye mera wife ka photo hai bolta acha acha why you love your wife too much that means you she inspires you and after seeing this photo you solve all the problems well there is not like that whenever there is any problem in the office when i see this i see are yaar isse bada problem to ghar mein hai ye problem to kuch nahi hai so i don't keep my wife's photo don't worry ye kali credit card hai because if i keep them at home my wife will finish all <laughs> so this is the ye that is the photo when you see the when you see this problem other problems are minor we will we will cope up but we have to not 
neglect the hygiene and sanitation. This is again I took my family out to dinner, MG Road, Foss area. Across the road, just 10 meters, this is everybody is throwing the waste from the restaurant and this is a parking place also. So I think the WHO theme from farm to plate is not adequate for our country. It should be farm to plate and beyond. Go plate ke baad aise fek dete hain. Because we Indians, they just throw it. Because the WHO ne bhi plate tak bola. Uske aage to humari zimmedari nahi hai. Aur iske bilkul opposite. Yaha pe restaurant ye hai. Iske just opposite there is a chamber of lawyer. I will not name the lawyer. I came to acquaint. I came to know her recently because we were going together for some ethical committee, number of committees we were in the same committee. So I as a doctor, she as a lawyer, institutional ethical committee. So I came to know her, then one day morning I go for a job. Suddenly I see her in jeans and cap and t-shirt. What she is doing? In front of a colony she is lifting garbage. Lot of people are lifting garbage and all that. There is a movement, I mean activism that Swach Bharat, Swach Bharat. She saw me and she is calling me, then I kept running faster. Next, when I met, she said, I wanted you to join me and we should generate awareness to clean. I said, just in, you are a lawyer, just in front of your office, this is the situation. Why don't you do something as a lawyer? Do you know about the FSSA 2006 Act? I thought if she knows something, I will take some material because I was to come and speak here. This was just last Sunday, last week. I said, if you, well, no, no, that is, I don't know anything about the act because I am not dealing with those type of cases. So even lawyers are not keeping, this law is a problem, you see. The lawyer says, ki ye mera specialization nahi hai. Abhi doctor hai, usko agar hum law parayenge, to kitna wo parayega law. Are you interested in law, any one of you? But you have to, I mean, act is there, everything is there, but... How much conversant, how much you know the law, law it, it's all, we will come to the law also, it, it's not rocket science, it is based on scientific principles, HSCCP and all, based on scientific principles. So the example from some outbreak, soldier marches in the stomach, so I think I am the correct person to speak on food because I have been in the armed forces, medical officer. So I, one major things only I will see what are the major blunders. There were case, 265 cases of viral hepatitis within a two months in a center. When we went to investigate, what we find is, this is the water line going through, sewage line, these are the soak pits. We found clustering in some barracks, we traced the water line, we found these are the soak pits from the toilets sewage tanks, soak pits, and through the soak pits, the water line is going. We asked the garrison engineer, he said, we don't know, we had given two different contractors, soak pit ka contractor alag tha, aur water line ka contractor alag tha. Wo usne apna blueprint kheecha, usko matlab nahi hai, saamne soak pit hai, uske through water line nikal diya. So this is the blunder which has happened in a military unit. So these are some of the blunders, These all the soak pits, full of soak pits, and through this the water line is going. Then we had to have a temporary and we could control it. Then similarly, antique fever outbreak in a center, again there was contamination of water line. There were more than 100 cases of antique fever from two barracks, clustering. And antique fever, you know, typhoid, waterborne. And then there will be 100 typhoid marys. You know, every soldier handles food. Or ata gutta, ye gutta hai, so much food bond it can convert into food bond. And one death also, one death of a young soldier took place. This is again a salmonella was detected in coriander. This is again trade. This is export, as you are aware, and this trade. And they were drying the coriander on ground where there were rats and all in. So they subsequently changed the practice. The so PFA Act, as you are aware, 1954 did not achieve the goal. They did a study in Banaras Hindu University on the PFA Act. This is a paper from 2002. 
so they did some survey and find out the if it was did not have they surveyed the food inspectors and poor conviction of offenders and another problem was there were number of different acts and rules eight like edible oil ka alag tha vegetable ka alag tha meat ka alag tha and there was a lot of confusion so now one good thing they have done is they have brought it under one head fssa 2006 So, Act FSA Act 2006 was enacted by Parliament to regulate storage, distribution. Yes, storage bhi aa jata hai grains. So, it will take time. Sale, consumption. So, new provisions kya hai? Let's say that new provisions mein they have included health food supplements and nutraceuticals like Complan, Boost, or other health products. There is a case going against these people for false claims under the Act. Then, special courts and compensation to victims according to the damage. Reward to informers. Informers are kept anonymous, and they get report. And training awareness program for food business. Now the thrust is from inspection to self-regulation. That they want the food business operators to be trained. That is a long-term aim, so that they regulate themselves. They identify the hazard. They identify the hazard themselves, and they have a sort of a self-regulation. so it should prevention from inspection it was inspector food inspector from inspection they want to prevention that identify the hazard at red point and that involvement of the food business operators themselves then the license procedures organization if you are already aware central level there is a food authority food authority is the fssai food safety and fssai ka f ha uh, food safety and standard authority of india uske andar ek chief executive chief advisory committee and a scientific committees are the evidence based scientific there are eight scientific committees which advises and then there are reps from different stakeholders 22 reps who form part of the committee including people from agriculture finance from the food industry from the consumer from the small retailers so all are represented and state level food safety commissioner joint food safety commissioner joint director and deputy and the designated officer these are usually the health officers and the senior food safety and food safety officers this food safety officers were the erstwhile food inspector so they have changed the terminology food inspector means wo inspector kar raha hai inspector raj so now it is food safety it is from inspection it is to safety to involve the food registration has become easier now pehle the food business operator had to run around now he gives an application and if he doesn't get the response within 2 months he can start a business all these are thick, uh, given in the net so i am not going to detail if you want to start a dhanda you can see the abhi but you have to know that you have to give an application and within 60 days you will get the if you don't get a permission you can start the business so this is the application procedure is all from the net i have taken within uh, and the small food operators need not have a license they can depends on the say 10 lakhs a kam or turnover yearly they can go just for registration which is a easier procedure so it is a friendly to business idea is it is a friendly to business in primary training of personnel they have a six training modules on this food safety for training of the food safety officers and also they want to have a external audit of the safety management food safety management system so they want each uh, food business operators to have a safety system based on the principles of hsccp what is hsccp ha uh, from at that means at each step they can be murphy's law malum hai na aapko what is murphy's law anyone murphy's law means if anything can go wrong it can go wrong so this hsccp is based on that it is not only just you see it is clean it is neat and all that you give points it is you ask what is it doing you see each procedure what temperature what action even right up to the plate they may be at the level of the food handler there may be some critical point there may be some hazard 
which you have to identify and you have to take steps to eliminate that hazard. So it is basically it is proposed by Codex Elementaries and adopted by all in the FSSA 2006 also this is the principle which is given the maximum emphasis the HSCCP. So this is the steps I think the subsequent speaker will also talk on this. So I will just we in the center we have a lot of yeah, in the armed forces we have a lot of inspections and I have showed you the outbreaks which we have seen in spite of the number of inspections by medical officers everyone we have a inspection of the food and the dining halls and other things. So we have a lot of training for medical officer and whenever we I used to tell them about HSCCP it was sometimes difficult for them to grasp. So I used to give them this example because in the training center we have some simulated modules or simulated situations. So I used to give this situation. What you see this is a waiter and he has got a pair of tongs. This is tongs. With this he catches the food. So one chap after attending a workshop like this he goes to a new city. Jodhpur like I go I said I want to see. I want to go to the cleanest restaurant where there is no hazard. I will do hazard analysis. So he goes and he sees a very clean restaurant spotlessly clean from outside, glasses are clean, tablecloths are clean, so he says, yeah, achha. he goes and sits in that. The waiter comes very spotlessly, he is dressed and black trousers, cap, mask also and the, so he is very impressed, there does not seem to be any hazard. He asks for the menu card, so apne pocket se tongs nikalta hai, waiter, menu uthata hai, usko pakrata hai, customer ko. He sees and he is about to give it back to the waiter. He says, no sir, you throw it in the dustbin. We follow totally a hygienic. Ek baar apne touch kar liya, contaminate ho gaya. Bapis dusra menu card dete agle waiter ko. He is very impressed. Wonderful. He goes. Then he orders a, what do you have sir, I have cutlets. Again he goes, brings, again he takes out the tongs from his pockets. Cutlet tongs se deta hai. Again he says, so he says sir and wearing gloves, customer is very impressed, he bilkul no touch technique hai, bilkul OT jaisa hai, gloves pehna hai, uske baad bhi haath se nahi touch kar raha hai. Afterward he sees all the waiters are moving in similarly dressed and every waiter ke belt ke niche se patla sa white string latak raha hai. So he calls the waiter, he says what is this I am seeing, aapko bhoot achcha hai, bolta sir. We are, management is very clear about HSCCP. There should be no hazard. Whenever we go to the washroom, we are not supposed to touch our zipper also with our hands. We have to pull it down with the string. He is very happy. Dekho, kitna care lete hai. Then suddenly he calls her hey, one thing I did not understand. That, wo wahan tak to samaj gaya ki niche khis lete ho. <laughs> hey, how do you proceed further? Waiter Volta sir, I don't know about the others, but I use these tongs. So this is, this is what is like until unless you ask each and every step, you will miss a hazard. Because the management was missing the hazard. So you have to put yourself, I mean this is the take home message. It is a take home message here that you put yourself in the position of the person who is most of the thing as you have seen